Landscape irrigation valves are available in various designs, each serving specific functions in controlling the flow of water in an irrigation system. In this video, we cover some of the more common types of valves and their typical applications. We'll start with the most basic, manually controlled devices, gate valves and ball valves. Gate valves operate by raising or lowering an internal gate in the form of a disc or wedge. Simple and reliable, they can be identified by their distinctive flower-shaped handle and are most often used as a main shutoff or isolation valve. Be aware that gate valves are intended to be used in the fully open or closed position and are not designed for flow regulation. Ball valves are also used to isolate the irrigation system from the main water supply. Like the name implies, ball valves use a sphere with a hole through the middle to control water flow. Turning the handle 90 degrees rotates the ball inside the valve body to either close or open the flow of water. If the irrigation system has a backflow prevention device, it will likely have a ball valve attached to the inlet and outlet side of the device. You can tell if a ball valve is opened or closed by the position of the handle. If it's parallel to the pipe, the valve is open. Like gate valves, most ball valves are intended to be used in the fully open or closed position and are not recommended for flow regulation. Common valves used to control the flow of water to a specific zone in an irrigation system include globe and anti-siphon valves. Globe valves have a spherical shaped body with an internal diaphragm that separates the upper and lower section of a chamber within the body. The diaphragm either obstructs or allows the passage of water through the valve using pressure. Anti-siphon valves are basically an angled globe valve on the inlet side and a backflow prevention device on the outlet side. The backflow prevention side prevents water from the irrigation system from being siphoned back into the supply line. This helps prevent contaminants, like fertilizer, from being pulled back into the clean water supply. Be aware that for an anti-siphon valve to meet code, it needs to be installed 6 to 12 inches above the highest sprinkler or drip emitter in the zone. While some valves are manually controlled, most use a solenoid to electronically open and close the valve. This allows the system to be automated using an irrigation controller. The valve is opened when a plunger inside the solenoid is lifted away from a pilot hole at the bottom of the solenoid housing. This releases the pressure on the top of the diaphragm, allowing it to lift up to let the water pass through the body. When the controller ends the watering cycle, the plunger reseals the pilot hole, returning pressure to the top of the diaphragm. With the aid of a spring, the diaphragm is forced back down to stop the flow of water. The flow rate, or amount of water that passes through both globe and anti-siphon valves, can be fine-tuned to meet the specific needs of the sprinklers in the zone. This is accomplished by turning down the flow control handle to regulate how far the diaphragm travels within the body. While we have covered the most common types of irrigation valves, there are many varieties available designed for specific purposes, such as pressure regulating valves and those designed to handle dirty water. To learn more, stop by your local Ewing branch or visit us online at ewingoutdoorsupply.com.